A Perth family claims it's been confronted by a UFO while crossing the Nullarbor. Their story's been backed by other motorists and the crew of two South Australian fishing boats have also reported being buzzed by a UFO. Faye Knowles and her three sons claim an orange blob picked their car up off the highway. They fled in terror into the scrub until the object disappeared. For the Knowles family, it was to have been a routine drive across the Nullarbor. That all changed as the family approached the town of Mundrabilla on the air highway. They claim that's when they had their unexpected and terrifying encounter with the unknown. The car was shaking. Um, I wind down a window and I said it's on top of the roof. And all this, I don't know what it was, it all come inside the car like this man. We thought we were all dead. And I went down my window and mum said there's something on the roof. And I said no, come off it, you know, you've got to be joking. She went down her window and she put her hand on the, on the roof and she goes, my God, she goes, what is it? And I, no, I swear to God, I'm not lying. I swear to God, I opened up my window and the car started going out of control. And all this smoke and it was like smoke. I'm not, I'm not lying, it was like smoke. And gases all started coming to the car. And me and my brother started to go crazy, you know. I thought it was going in my head. Felt like my brain was getting sucked out. Another motorist and a truck driver also witnessed the incident. They confirm the Knowles family story. Police are investigating the claim. They say the car did have dents on the roof and an ash substance inside. Late today, the Knowles family returned to the scene of their experience for the last time. And uh, you won't travel that stretch of road again? No way. You, you, don't even, you don't even wish to travel in your own car? No. It was not a star, but could not identify what it was. Later, inland at Mundrabilla Roadhouse, near the West Australian-South Australian border, a truck driver reported that he had also seen an incredible light in the sky. At 5.30 yesterday morning, a West Australian family of four travelling east say a UFO landed on their car. They were travelling at 200 kilometres an hour at the time. The object was emitting an extremely bright light. And they were travelling in the same area as the previous sightings. In a moment, I'll talk with the family, but first, Emily Booker with this report on the strange goings-on in that part of Australia. History is dotted with strange lights and reported visits to Earth of UFOs. Australia itself records 180 sightings a year, and although 92% of these turn out to be planes, clouds or some other natural phenomenon, 8% are never explained. And it is the skies to the west and south of this vast continent which have played host most frequently to the suspected flying saucers. What was your reaction when you saw the lights for the first time? It's a funny sensation. You, you, know, you feel the hairs in your legs sort of curling and your heart beating at about a million things per second and your arms and legs sort of don't want to move. So, um, what was it? <laughs> I don't know. These tough Aussie truckies are the last people you'd expect to believe in UFOs but these pictures record their terrifying encounter. It was virtually on the ground at the first, first sighting, and uh, it was there until Monty took that last, last photograph, and, uh, and, and then it appeared to move off. For the Port Neal community in South Australia, the visit of a UFO wasn't confined to the skies. Whatever the object was, there's no doubt from these pictures that it landed on the Rodder's property. There's something that's causing these things that we can't explain, so why not believe in flying saucers? <laughs> now the UFOs have disturbed the peace of the southwestern skies yet again. The Knowles family of Perth were in their car heading across the Nullarbor Plain when a bright light appeared above them, picked up their car and dropped it. Well, to the Knowles family in Adelaide, thanks for joining us. And 36 hours now after the event, do any of you have any doubts as to 
what happened? Do you still believe that it was a UFO that landed on your car? Yes, we do. Why do you believe that? Because we actually saw it, you know, it was chasing us and it all of a sudden it landed on our car, we pulled our car back and I put my hand out the window and I, I fell on the roof. What did, Just, you, what did you feel? It was like a um, sponge on the roof, it was sucking the roof, you know, the car. It was a sponge. I saw it. How big was it? What did it look it was like? About, I don't really know. I can't really explain. Did you see anything but a light? No, um, not, not, not really. It was a. Uh, I can't explain it. Uh, it was sort of. It was shaped like this. Hang on. It was shaped like this. It had like a little circle in the centre, and that was like a yellow sort of colour. And it had on the outsides. It was sort of shaped like that, and on the outsides it was like that, and in the centre it was like that. And I asked me Beretta, you know, if that was a spaceship, and he goes, don't be stupid. So I got up closer to have a look, and it was moving backwards and forwards. And so we decided to take off to have a look. We decided to take off, and it was flying miles back, and... I drove miles up the road again, and it was in front of us again. How, how high off the ground was it? It was, it was on the ground. I mean, it was on the ground. It was on the ground, facing us when we were driving along. And then, so it was moving along with you? Yeah, it was following us. And then eventually, you tried to get away from it. Is that right? It was still chasing us. Sean you, Sean, you were driving. How fast did you get up to? I got up to about 200 kilometres. That's very fast. Have you driven that fast before? Uh, no, I haven't. And the car is capable of doing 200 yeah, kilometres an hour? Is. Yeah. And at what stage did the object land on your roof? Oh. How fast were you going at the time? I was doing about 200. I got a blowout. And once the car stopped, I blinked out. And I don't know what happened after that. It was definitely on the roof. How do we know you're telling the truth? I oh, know it was even witnesses. Well, you, but uh, a lot of people think that you are making it up. Do you realise that? That's not true. No way. When it landed on the car, what, what happened? We what were what, screaming and yelling. And as soon as it landed on the car, that's when my tyre blew out. Smoke started coming in the car. The like smoke me. started to come in the car. <sighs> and that's when I just blanked out. There was one report that your voices changed, is that correct? Yes, yes. they did. They did. In what way? Oh, um, really deep and deep. slow and I don't know. We started sounding like that. Can like you... Real deep, deeper than that even. It was so deep, you know, it's really hard to explain. More or less like our voice kind of died out as we were talking. If a car has a blowout at 200 kilometres an hour, there is a danger, isn't it, that it will overturn? How That's come you right. didn't? <laughs> there was a weight on the roof. And explain that. Was the car on the road at all times, or was it lifted off, as has been reported? We don't really know, but we think it has been lifted off the road. How long did it... Uh, how long was it with you, this object? For about five or ten minutes, we think. Were there any sounds or smells? Yes, yeah, there was. There was a sound. It sounded like a humming sound. It sounded like boom, boom, boom. And, it, and uh, when it was on the roof, I went down my window and all this smoke started coming. It was like a greyish black mist. And that's when our voices started to change. All of us, our voices just went really deep and strange. And we, found like, we felt like we were dying. And uh, the brake, my brother chucked the brakes on the car and this thing just shot off. And as it shot off, we just hid out in the bushes. Got out the car, hid out in the bushes, waited for about 10, 15 minutes. Went over back to the car, took, this, took the wheel off, chucked that in the boot, got the spare wheel out, put that on. And we just let down Jack. We didn't worry about Jack, we just chucked the Jack in the bushes. And we just shut off. And then it started to follow us again. 
and it started to come day by then it was starting to get daylight and it just seemed to lose us for some reason we turned the headlights off and that's when it lost us patrick had any of you been drinking no no way no were you tired well, i was a bit tired yeah but not tired enough to <laughs> see a thing <laughs> like that. And How scared were you, Patrick? I oh, really scared. Terrified. Scared as I've ever been. Well, what was your feelings? What were you feeling at the time when this was all we're happening? We're going to die. <laughs> That's what I felt like we just made us feel like we're dying. Have you had any unusual feelings since it happened? Oh, a bit sick or was I won't, I won't turn the lights off at night. I'm too scared to go to sleep. Any other feelings? What about you, Wayne? How do you feel about it all? Pretty scary, right? What was the worst part of it for you? Mm. You wouldn't, would you be happy to go back there and have a look around to see what had happened? Not really, I don't want to go back. So just, just summing up, do any of you have any idea, uh, uh, Wayne, uh, Sean, you think it was a, a spaceship? What about yourself, Mrs Knowles, do you have any ideas? I, I reckon it was a BFO or something, you know, because it was strange. It was following us everywhere, we wouldn't leave us alone. I was a nervous wreck when I got up to the garage. So. Well, thank you very much for telling us your story. Mrs Faye Knowles and her three sons, Patrick, Sean and Wayne, say their car was chased in the night by a giant glowing egg-shaped object. The car was picked up, they say, shaken and dropped so hard it blew a tyre. They say the car was showered with dark ash and police have confirmed that ash from somewhere was found on and in the car. A truck driver has corroborated the story and two fishing boats in the Gulf have also reported UFO sightings about half an hour later. I have the Knowles family in our sister station, SAS7 in Adelaide, for this exclusive interview. Mrs Knowles, how are you? Not bad, thank you. If I said to you and one of your sons, if say Patrick had come home late tonight and said to you, Mum, I'm late because I was crossing the Nullarbor and a big giant thing picked up my car and shook it and dropped it again, what would your reaction be if you hadn't been there? I would say he was crazy. Had you believed in UFOs before this? Never. No. Did we, were you at all tempted not to tell the police because people may take yes. the mickey out of you? We weren't going to go, but we made up our mind to go, you know, because it might happen to someone else. Well, let's go back to stage one. What time in the morning was it when, you, when it first happened? About five o'clock in the morning. And you were driving which way? Uh, towards then Victoria. Towards, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And did it suddenly come up behind you, in front of you, or just hover over the car? It was in the middle of the road. It was, sitting, you know, just in the middle of the road. Up in front of you? Yeah, in front of us. How big? Oh... Uh, well, it looked like, looked like truck lots to us, you know. I didn't take much notice. Uh, Sean said to me, oh, that's something unusual now. I said, I've oh, come off it and you've got to be joking. Was and it still dark? It was pretty dark then, yeah. And you thought it was, Patrick, you thought they were just headlights sort of coming towards oh, you? I did, you know. You see something like that, you wouldn't take much notice. You'd, just think it's a truck or a car. Were you all awake first? at the time? Yes, yes, we were. Did it make a noise? Oh, it was terrible. It was terrifying. What was the noise like? Oh, it was there? like a humming sound. Oh. And so when it got, you kept driving, approaching it, no, did it veer over the top of your what? I was, <clears throat> I was driving. You were driving, Sean? Mm. And did, it, did you drive straight at it? Did it sw leap over you or what? Ah, uh, no, I had to put my foot down because it was chasing us. Well, did it get behind you somehow then? What it was, it was a fair hike back before it even jumped on the roof. Like you explained this, like it was a fair distance back. And the next second it was on the roof. Did you hear a clunking noise when it got on the roof? Yes, we did. Uh -huh. And then, Wayne, after that... How long did it go for? When did, when did it lift the car off the ground? Start shaking and start lifting the ground up out of the car, me. Start lifting it. What were you saying to each other? We died. We thought we were dying. Yeah. You know, we didn't know what to do. Did you shout? Did you cry? Or? I was screaming. I was in hystericals. We were talking like aliens. Uh, explain this. If you're doing 200 kilometres, you blow out a back tyre, would you... Would you roll a car or what? Yeah. Is that, <laughs> does that explain it? H how long were you there? How long were you suspended? How far off the ground do you think you were? Well, we don't know, because we were, we were stunned, you know, we were in a state of shock, because we don't know what was going on. All of a sudden, these things on our roof and pulling the car up, we don't know what's going on. So then it dropped you and you blew a tyre. Yeah. What happened next? Did you get out of the car? 
I, I wound down the window and I, saw, and I felt this thing on the roof, you know. And I said, gee, there's something on top of our roof. I said, it's land on the roof or something, you know. And I didn't know what to do. And I was screaming. And as soon as I said that, a little this um, smoke stuff come into the car. The car was covered in all this black stuff, wasn't it? Well, a grit or soot or ash. It was like a soot. Black soot stuff just coming on top of us. So then what did you all do? We thought we were dying. Then we got out the car and we hid behind the little tree in the bushes and it couldn't find us. Then we was jumped it, was back it still the there? It was still there waiting for it, looking for us. Was it on the road or no. moving around? We don't know. It was up the road a bit further from us. I'm sorry. That's all right. And so up the road a bit further, then did it come back looking for you? Yeah, and then we took off in the bushes. How long did you stay in the bushes? Oh, about 15 minutes. Then all of a sudden it took off again, and we, when we hopped in the car to take off again, it came after us again. It wouldn't leave us alone. Well, did you... Who, who changed the tyre? Sean changed, took him two minutes to change the tyre. I bet it did. <laughs> we left the jack and everything. We just left everything up there. We just took off. And at that stage, did you think you'd, you were involved with a, with a flying saucer? Yes, we really we did. did. We said we're dead, you know. We thought we were really dying. The question this morning that possibly the argument against it, whether it was a UFO or not, that possibly it was a freak. It was a, what they call ball lightning. Do you believe no, that? No, that's not true. No way. No way. If, if it's happening for about an hour and a half, I doubt if it's a ball. <laughs> no Do you think all, all this went on for about an hour and a half? It yeah. went on for about an hour and a half. Wouldn't leave us alone. Did Get any other cars or trucks pass you at yes, that time? Yes, they did. There was a couple of trucks. We tried to pull one up, but, we, she, but we, the lady wouldn't pull up for us because she's a lady trucky. She told us when we got up the road that she didn't know it was us. We were in trouble. Did she see something? Yes, they did. Yeah, they came around last night to have an interview with... What's his name? Um, uh, Fred. I forget his second name, yeah. But they're the ones that reported to the police. There was no witness that said they seen something on our car, but they won't give their name. Went to the police. Did it... When you were trying to put it back together again today and piece together what it might have been, did you cross your minds, maybe it was some military weapon, maybe it was some... No way, it was after us. Was Why that... do you think that, that they'd single out your car? We don't know, it was chasing other cars and all of a sudden it come after us. We don't really know. Because mm. there was four of us in the car. So, none of you got physically hurt, none of you, nobody tried to... You didn't see any, any um, little green men or any men from outer no, space? No, no. no way. <laughs> Before all of this happened, uh, have any, are, any of you, any of the four of you, believed in flying saucers? No way. We all thought, no. it, I thought it was all a load of crap, you know. I thought, come on, you know, stuff like that, there's only the movies, you know. But the way it happened, it actually seemed like it was a movie. One of the policemen has already said that, uh, that when you finally talked to them, that your mother was, uh, was really shocked. It really looked like you'd seen something horrible out there in the desert. We did. We were like ghosts. We were just like white ghosts. Did you manage to um, sleep last night? No, I couldn't sleep. I, I'm too scared to turn the light off now. And when we drive along in the car in front, that is behind us all the time. That's chasing us. Are you likely to drive home again? No, I don't think so. Not enough through that way. No way. We're catching train home to Perth. Taking a train back. <laughs> now, the ash that was on the car and in the car, was the ash still there when you got to the police station? Yes, yeah. we left everything. They said not to clean it, don't do nothing with the car. They're getting it all checked out for us. So. Is, is that ash being, um, being analysed? Yep. Yeah, everything is. Everything's going to be You should done. see the tyre. Huh. Do you now believe that there is, is life in outer space? No, actually, I, I'm not saying believe it all, don't you know, but what I'm saying is uh, there, there is something out there which you can't explain, which I don't know. There's definitely something out there. It's got to, something's got to be done. Someone else is going to get really hurt. What could be done? We don't really know. Yeah. And just one, one final question about the, the, the look of it. Do you all agree on the description of it, or do you have different ideas? No, what do you think? we definitely agree, agree on the light. Agree. Hold on. Faye, what sort of light do you think it was? Um, it was uh, all of a sudden it was a small light, and all of a sudden it comes so big like this, like a big ball. Could you see anything in the middle of it, anything metallic? Um, we don't really know. You know, we're in a state of shock. Yeah. I didn't really take notice. Patrick, is that the sort of thing you, you saw? A big ball of light, yeah. It was like it. Uh, it was like it. it looked like a truck headlight. And on top it looked like it had a light, a uh, high beam, like a light high beam, and it like a flash, it was kept on flashing, like yeah. a... It's terrible. And uh, Sean, what, how did you describe it? <sighs> Sean? You'd rather not remember. 
Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll leave it at that. I thank you for your time.